Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. So today is going to be kind of an unplanned video. Um, before we get into it, I have a couple things that I want to say. The first thing is that I did not come up with this idea. I saw it on booktube a while back. If I can find the original, I'll link it in the description box below. If not, then I'm sorry and I'm not trying to take credit for something that you did. Uh, I, in light of certain situations, I think that this is kind of perfect. But a while back on booktube, I saw this video that was this just for fun video this woman was uh picking 10 books that she would save in a fire if she could and obviously it was meant as a joke you would want to take your animals your family kids husband wife child real child you know well I guess that children and kids are the same thing but you get what I mean you wouldn't really technically worry about books as much however um, in the city that I live in it is well I live in the middle of the desert and uh, <laughs> The desert's on fire right now. If I go outside, um, <laughs> I can feel the flames on the mountaintop that's like, okay, so my house is right here, and then like, phew, right here is the mountain that's on fire. And it's been on fire since last Friday, it is Thursday when I am filming this and we thought that it had been contained and that everything would be good and I'm probably worried about nothing it's all gonna be okay but oh my gosh guys what a year 2020 has been uh, from COVID-19 causing a pandemic being quarantined. Oh, just everything, guys. George Floyd, the Black Lives Movement, protests, riots, and now all the drama with Book Outlet, which I'm not going to get into in this video, but it's just been a wild ride and we're only six months into it and yet again we get hit with another brick so my neighborhood is going to be the next to evacuate if the fire spreads anymore I have to leave uh, there's no way around it and uh, it got me and my husband thinking. Uh, so I thought I would do this if I if I were in a fire and could save 10 books and only 10 books what books would I pick? I have not planned this. I honestly don't even know the books that I'm going to pick myself. I might have an idea of two books that I definitely don't want to get rid of or don't want to see blaze up in a fire and like obviously I don't want any of my stuff or my house to go up in flames but we are coming up with an evacuation plan if it comes to that and uh, come here me and Jelly Bean and Wyatt and Bella oh and my husband 
um, <laughs> we'll all be safe. And that's the important part. So this tag is not like a serious tag. I mean, in the circumstances, it is very serious. And it truly could be the only 10 books that I get to keep. Um, but I need to try to have some fun, try to be happy, and get my mind off the craziness of the world right now. So we're just going to do this tag. I think i got to move you guys a little bit, though, so that I can see my books better. Jelly Bean, come here. Okay, so this is Jelly Bean. He's the youngest puppy I have. I have three chihuahuas. I'm the crazy chihuahua lady. Oh my gosh, come here, Wyatt. Sorry, he's trying to get up here too. So here are two of my threes. Uh, <laughs> but let's see what books I'm going to pick. You know what, I think I'm gonna pick my 10 books and then talk about them and tell you why I picked them. So, yeah. Sorry, I got Burger King for lunch. Um, but I have my 10 books that could potentially be the only books that I own, which is very heavy, but I don't want this to be a heavy video. I just want it to be a fun tag because that's what it was built as or dreamed up. I think that it was Holly Hart's books that I saw doing this tag, but I don't know for sure if I can find it up in the description box, I promise. Um, but yeah, this is actually more heavy than I thought it would be. So I have my backpack and I think there will still be room, but the tag is only 10 books. So I'm going to go with it. And these are going to be the 10 books that I save in case I have to evacuate my home, uh, my life. So let's just get into this. The first one is by an author. Alright, sorry about that. But this first one is a by an author that I read for the first time this year and this will be the third book I've read by her and uh, sh I haven't read this one so this one is an unread book that I'm taking with me it is and then there were none by Agatha Christie and uh, Agatha Christie just has a way with words typically I'm not a girl that likes to read classics but Agatha Christie is amazing. She, it even says the queen of mystery. She really is the queen of mystery. And this is about a group of 10 people that are invited to this mansion that's on an island. See, because it's surrounded by water. So there's literally no escape. When they get there, they are accused of being liars and having secrets and then one by one they start dying and I'm so hyped for this book it uh, I just really want to read it I've read like remakes of this remakes of this by other authors who were inspired by it and uh, I didn't really enjoy it as much, but the one that I read was a YA novel. This one's an adult novel, so I think that does make a difference. Let's go on to the second book that's going to go into my fire bag, for lack of a better word. And this is another one I haven't read yet. It is Warcross by Marie Lu. 
So this has been compared to Ready Player One, which uh, is one of my favorites. Uh, I just read Re Ready Player One for the first time last week, but I loved it. I gave it four stars just because there were some boring, slower parts, which I don't love in books. But I'm hoping this one's kind of more action-packed and uh, faster pace. That's what I'm expecting. That's what I'm hoping. But it's like a virtual reality type book. And it just says Player Hunter Hacker Pawn. So I'm excited for that. Don't worry, there are some red books. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so seven of them. I can't count, can I? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so six of them are red. Four of them are not. Sorry, I just had a moment there. But, let's go on. Let's just finish up the unread ones. The first unread book going into my fire bag is uh, Dragon Tears by Dean Coots. And uh, my friend sent me a ton of Dean Coots backlist. I'll link the video up here of me unboxing it, like, whatever side it goes on. I don't remember. Um, but I have read a couple of them. One I actually unhauled because Dean Coots is one of my favorite authors, but that book just didn't work for me. Uh, the other one was a five-star read, and I really debated taking that one. But I've been thinking about this book pretty much since I got it. So from the synopsis, I'm pretty sure this is about a cop who tries to stay positive and have a good attitude in life. And then one night when he's at work, someone says to him, tick tock, you'll be dead in 16 hours. Dead by dawn, dead by dawn, dead by dawn. And that is all that I know about this book, but that sounds freaking amazing. And come on, Dean Coots is the king of horror. Yeah, I went there. Beat me. Well, don't really beat me, that's weird. But come at me. I know a lot of people in the comments are going to be like, No, Stephen King's the king of horror. But the thing is that I don't love Stephen King novels. I still want to give him a chance and I still want to fall in love with him. So if my house doesn't burn down and if I don't have to evacuate, then I have two other Stephen King books on my shelf to read eventually. But for the sake of this tag and the sake of uh, current events, we are going to stick with this Dean Coots book. And then the last unread book that I'm taking with me is uh, The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. Oh my gosh. So I haven't even read it and I'm already super excited for it. So it's basically the story about a family who's vacationing in the middle of nowhere. Uh, their closest neighbors are like two miles away on either side of them. And they have their little cabin in the woods. And the little girl, Wynn, is playing outside. And she sees this really tall guy. I think in the description it says a really big guy uh, and he approaches her and says basically tells her that whatever happens from this point on is not her fault and that her and her family have to let him in and they have to save the world and uh, 
It's supposed to be like scary, which I've been really loving right now. And it's, I don't know, it just sounds really good. It kind of gives me uh, The Strangers vibes, uh, which was a movie based on a true story. It kind of gives me that kind of vibe. And I'm hoping that it is like that because I loved that movie. I especially loved it because it was a true story. I love anything that's a true story, which is kind of cool but kind of bad on one side because if someone labels it a true story and it's not really a true story and then I go in thinking it's a true story and then I might really love it but it's based on false pretenses. I don't know. Anyway, let's finish this haul. So these ones I have read and if I'm bringing them in my fire bag then I absolutely love them. The first one I think is my only, oh wait no it's not my only coming of age story, but it's a coming of age story. It's The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chabotsky and oh my gosh it's been a long time since I've read this but I just remember getting all the feels for this book. And there's also a movie, which I really liked the movie too. But yeah, it's just a coming of age, high school, dramatic book. And it's so good. The... Okay, I'm going to end with those ones. So these next two are kind of scary. -ish. Okay, the first one's not very scary, but it's a dystopian. It's The Fifth Wave by Rick Yancey. This is one of my favorite dystopians ever. Uh, I really loved this. I don't typically read about aliens. There are aliens in this, but they're done in such a way that it doesn't feel like they're you know, like nasty aliens. They're just alien human-ish? I don't know. You'd have to read it yourself. But it's a... Uh, there are five waves that take place that destroy the world. And you follow Cassie. Yeah, she's trying to save her little brother because he was kidnapped by the government. I believe and, and he's stationed at a camp for kids now for orphaned kids and so she has to break in to that camp and break her brother out and it was amazing it's a five-star book flawless book I I don't know a single thing wrong with this book I don't like the rest of the series, so they can burn. Ha, 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 ha. I don't own the rest of the series anymore uh, because I did not like it. Uh, the second book in the series was The Infinite Sea. It uh, was very slow, very boring. Uh, it changed points of view every single chapter, so I was like halfway through a chapter and then I'm like wait whose perspective I thought that it was this per oh my god it's this person and it was just so confusing it was a jumbled mess but I love the first one the first one has so much potential then my only like really scary scary one well I don't know the Dean Coots one might be scary but uh, Riley Sager is yet another author that I found this year. I've read two books by him, and this is his first book, Final Girls. Uh, I loved this. I just read it the other day, but it was a five out of five star read. It's a horror thriller. And oh my gosh, the twists and turns in this, oh, left me just shook. 
to my core because oh, I can't give spoilers so I can't really say anything else but oh my gosh it was just an action packed heart racing book and I love when books can do that alright so my last three books for my fire bag. So I think these are going to surprise some people because it's not my normal genre. Like, I usually love... Whoa, there's no middle grade over there. But I usually love middle grade or thrillers. Um, I'm actually kind of getting over YA books, like, uh, most of my books at one point or another were or kind of are still YA books, but I find a lot of them to be boring. There are exceptions, so I still read YA quite often, but I do want to get more into the adult genre. She says that she holds up three YA novels. But for my fire bag, I'm picking Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Abertali. And oh my gosh, I read this for the first time this year as well. I've already read it twice. And, uh... It's just so super duper cute. So it's about Simon who falls in love online with this guy named Blue. And uh, Blue doesn't know who he is and he doesn't know who Blue is. And it's kind of the mystery unfolding of who they both fell in love with and uh, will there be romance in the end and will Simon get the man of his dreams or the boy of his dreams or will he stay a closeted teenager? So it has great LGBTQ plus representation. Uh, it's just a feel good romance mystery and I just loved it. And then kind of following that same trend in the department of internet romances, not knowing who you're falling in love with, is Tell Me Three Things by Julie Buxbaum. This one is very underhyped. I've never heard anyone talk about it, but oh my gosh, it gave me all the feels. Like, every single feel. I cried a little at the end with the reveal because it was so darn cute. And uh, so, like Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda, this is about a girl who goes online and she starts talking to SN, somebody, nobody. That's what he goes by. He knows who she is, but she doesn't know who he is. And every day, well, at first she kind of ignores him and she's like, yeah, whatever, that's weird. And then somehow they kind of start talking back and forth online. And it's called Tell Me Three Things because there becomes a part, a point in the book where they talk every single day and the first thing they do is tell me three things. So Jesse will tell somebody nobody three things about herself and then somebody no nobody tells her three things about himself. And it's just super cute and I feel like it's going to be one of my feel-good, mindless kind of reads. I'll just be like, oof. Honestly, this took me like two hours, three hours to read. I read it in one sitting, okay? Which doesn't happen too often with books. But 
It was so good. I highly recommend it. I recommend them all, or else I wouldn't be keeping them. Well, except for the ones I haven't read, I'm just predicting that they're going to be one of my all-time favorites. And the last one for my fire bag is another contemporary romance. YA edition. I know, I'm just as shocked. Uh, but I buddy read this with my friends Michael and Amanda. And I think all of us loved it. It's The Way You Make Me Feel by Marine Goo. So typically romance like makes me want to barf and it's so fluffy and like not at all realistic. Uh, but this was so died down in the fluffiness, which I love. If you like all that fluffy junk in your books, you might still like this because both Amanda and Michael like the fluffy, like, Casey West and Colleen Hoover fluffy reads. Just the fluffy feel-good reads, but they also loved it this. So it wasn't as fluffy as something like that, but it was such a feel-good love story. So there's a food truck, there's a enemies to friendship. It has nothing to do with the love story, but I just loved that aspect of this book. Then there was just this geeky uh, stranger who ends up... Yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. Uh, but, oh my god, it was so good. And it just makes me smile, even just thinking about it. So, I definitely am going to take this. Um, but those were my ten books. Let me gather them. So, here are my ten books that are going into my fire bag. So, if something happens where I really have to evacuate... I will have my 10 books and all the rest will stay behind. That's crazy. But it's just stuff and I know that as long as my doggies and my hubby, it should be my hubby and my doggies, but you see how I put the dogs first. He knows it too. Uh, <laughs> but. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, you should connect with me on any of my social media. It'll be linked below. Uh, I love interacting with my audience, my subscribers, my friends. I feel like we're friends. Uh, so leave in the comments below anything that you want to talk about. Or heck, tell me what 10 books you would pick if you were in a situation like mine where you might have to evacuate so you have to get all your stuff ready right now and you can only take 10 books i don't know why you can only take 10 my bag can definitely fit more but it's 10 and uh yeah just tell me what you would keep and why let's get chatting in the comment section um, I'll catch you guys in the next video, and I will also update you at some point about what's going on with the fire that's burning here, and if it is going to come down to us packing up and leaving, or what's going to happen, you know, I'll let you guys know as... We figure it out ourselves. Uh, but thank you, and I'll see you guys later.